Yo, this is a family-friendly commentary on a not-so-family-friendly movie. The movie, Where the Crawdads Sing, based on the best-selling novel of the same name, has a rather large difference between the audience and the critic scores. Hello everyone, he's Mio. And he's Guido. And we watched Where the Crawdads Sing to figure out why the critics hate it so much. But first, we're going to have a quick summary for those of you who haven't seen the movie. Or read the book. There are some differences between the film and the book, but that's not too important for this discussion. This is about the movie. Spoiler warning. The movie opens up in the North Carolina marshlands in the year 1969. Two young boys discover the body of a man named Chase, and the police investigation finds evidence that there could have been a murder. Their prime suspect is the mysterious Marsh Girl, whose name is Kaya, and they try to bring her in for questioning, but she runs away, further incriminating herself. They bring her in, and she's now in jail, but some guy that she knows from the past, comes in and decides that he's going to try to offer up a defense for her. But to offer a proper defense, he needs to know more about her. And we find out about her childhood with an abusive father who drove the rest of her family away, and then eventually abandoned her to live by herself from the age of six years old, and develops a love for nature, and begins making complex drawings and paintings of what she sees. She later meets up with a boy named Tate who she knew from her childhood, and the two strike off a romantic relationship. Tate eventually has to leave to go to university to get some work. He leaves Kaya behind, but says he'll be back by the 4th of July, he does not, and Kaya is heartbroken. A few years later, she develops a romantic relationship with a boy named Chase Andrews. They fall in love-ish, but it turns out that he's actually a really creepy jerk who is two-timing her the entire time. After a major serious altercation, she fears for her life, so she flees the town to go to a meeting with her publishers, because she started to publish her work. But while she's gone, Chase Andrews is murdered. Back in the present, to summarize the court proceedings, uh, flimsy evidence is given to show that Kaya is a murderer, but her lawyer keeps on refuting such evidence, and in the end, the jury decides that she is not guilty. She gets together with Tate, and they live a happy life together. Years and years and years later, she dies of unknown causes, and Tate discovers, big spoiler here, that she was a murderer the entire time. She just covered up the evidence really well. And she did indeed kill Chase Andrews. Well, now that we're all caught up, let's proceed. Our first impressions after watching the movie were pretty mixed, but to start off with the positives, the acting in this movie was really good. Tate, I believe, have carried most of the emotion in the film during those emotional scenes. Yeah, the, yeah the, uh, some of the best parts of the movie for me were early on when Tate and Kaya get to know each other for the first time. A little cheesy, but overall it was decently delivered. Indeed. Also, the actress who played Kaya really carried the movie with her acting. Indeed, and Chase gives us some legit creepy vibes, so very good acting. And there's also some very nice visuals, even though they don't look super swampy, as they could have, and not much danger in the marsh, but overall it has a nice feel to it. As far as the negatives go... The pacing is rather slow, and the story itself is somewhat cliche. It's kind of difficult for the movie to hold your interest for long periods of time, especially since the movie's over two hours long. There's a lot of unnecessary sexual content. I know that's probably in the book, but after a while, some of the scenes just last a little too long, and just make you feel uncomfortable as opposed to adding anything to the story. So much kissing. Ugh. There's also a lot of bloat in this movie, like lots of scenes where not much is really happening to progress the story. There's a few plot holes here and there, especially in the beginning of how a six-year-old girl could somehow survive on her own in a house that's separate in a marsh. Things don't always make sense, but you know, you can usually ignore those for the most part. And one of the biggest problems with this film is the backwards morals of it. There are no morals, because the movie is like, hey, people judge her wrongfully because they don't know her. But in the end, she did end up murdering the guy. Yeah, there's a talk of nature not having any morals or that one must do what they have to to survive, which is what the main character apparently believes. However, the audience is left, or at least it left us, somewhat confused about how to feel at the end of the story. Kai might be a self-insert for the author, but we'll get to that in a second. And the biggest <laughs> issue in this movie, the one that is unforgivable, makes this a zero out of ten, is the fact that there was not one single crawdad in this movie on screen at any time. Most upsetting. Moving on. Overall, we give it 4.5 motorboats out of ten. No, I insist a zero, not a and single crawdad. First, let's pull up some quick audience reviews. Five out of five. Visually stunning. True to the book. Fascinating study of human psyche. Most matches the book. Very surprised ending. Well worth watching. Read the book, too. Excellent movie. Very true to the book. This is one of the rare instances where I actually like the movie better than the book. Great movie. I laughed, I cried, and I was surprised. All in all, a good night. Go see it. No. Wow. Not what I expected. Stay home for the... Stay home and wait for it to come out streaming. Beautiful scenery, but not such a... 
just thought at first it was a love story and it was mediocre and I was a little disappointed but oh my I was wrong even my hubby liked it nobody cares moving on to nobody the cares about your hubby. moving on to the critic, moving on to the critic reviews a flat fair free and uninspiring adaption two out of five like the backdrop marsh or swamp it's all a bit soggy a fairly engrossing entertainment a little bit slick and doesn't go in depth into the marsh. Overall, one can't help but notice that Newman's adaption feels too clean, too glossy, too neatly packed to be in any way plausible, even with a fair amount of suspension of disbelief. And there are plenty more rotten reviews, really. So the general consensus of the audience seems to be that it is very good because it follows the book. But what if you didn't like the book? Even the critic positive reviews seem to have some quarrels with things like the pacing or the setting. Or even just the direction of the film. It definitely seems like most of the audience came because they either liked the book or they heard the book was good. And they were happy that it followed the book. Whereas the critics seem to be rating it purely based on it being a movie. And focused mostly on the negative aspects. Of which there are many. But then we saw this review and we started to ask some questions. If you're mildly curious but unsure if you feel comfortable putting money into Del Delia or Delia? Into Delia Owens pocket? Well maybe check it out from the library in a few years. So who is Delia Owens? And I might even correctly pronouncing her name. Only time will tell. So we did some quick research and the first thing that popped up in the Bing search engine was Delia Owens controversy. Some of the circumstances are a little unclear but there seems that there was something dealing with murder. The murder of poachers. Oh, Mrs. Owens and her husband, Mark Owens, went on several excursions into Africa. They focused on conservation efforts in which they and reportedly 60 other people hunted down poachers. In a tape, it is shown that possibly their son, who was with them on this trip, is responsible for ambushing and murdering a poacher. Mr. and Mrs. Owens, Mrs. Owens therefore, might have been responsible for similar instances or at the very least covering this one up for as long as they have. Now Delia, Mark, and their son are all wanted for questioning in Zambia for the alleged murder. They have denied any connection to this crime, but time will tell what the evidence shows. Overall, I would say it's not looking so great for them. There's also some other stuff that has popped up. Now, this could also be because some bad stuff is coming out about Delia Owens, and they want to try to smear her name even more. But there have been some instances where she may or may not be racist. She and her husband have been possibly known to refer to Africa as the Dark Continent, and in some reported quotes, and I think I'm paraphrasing here, so don't quote me on this, but that Africa is a great place, it's a shame it belongs to all the Africans. They also believe very heavily in the population control of Africa for unknown reasons. Now, the main question as to how this affects the book is the fact that the book seems to justify murder in certain cases, just like Delia Owen in her own personal life might try to justify killing poachers. Could be a bit of self-projection on there, maybe? Quite possibly, but we do not know for sure. And neither do the critics, so they may want to try to distance themselves from praising a movie based on a book of a suspected possible murderer about a person who got away with murder. It's not like things like this have not happened before. But to end this video, what are your opinions on the way the crawdads sing? Did you like it or no? Do you think the critics are right? And do you think that the author is self-objecting and trying to excuse murder? If you don't want to comment down any of these things, just comment down below crayfish. Crawdads, depending on where you're from. Until the next video, have a blessed day. Bye! Bye. Not one single crawdad. And I did not hear any singing.